So our last, last speaker, uh, Dr. Aditya Seth. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so uh, my topic is, uh, it's basically a free paper on comprehensive analysis of factors influencing surgical outcomes of traumatic pediatric cataract. So this is basically homework. Uh, it was, it, the idea came from actually uh, answering those difficult questions that pa parents will, and apparently parent will ask you when you have a patient with traumatic pediatric cataract in your OPD. Uh, can we answer them by just having a SITLAM examination? That's where the idea came uh, from. And are we doing uh, whatever we are practicing in our OT? Is it actually giving us fruit? So just to do a little background a retrospective study, we uh, did this study at our center. So basically, any traumatic cataract, it's uh, any which award. And when it's a pediatric traumatic cataract, you're basically displaying it for 80 years in your drawing room. So it's something that you have to be very cautious with. So you have to strategize your battle. So in our study, we had 56 eyes of 56 children. Uh, all of them were less than 17 years uh, of age. Uh, two surgeons operated on them. Both were pediatric uh, ophthalmologists uh, at a tertiary uh, private eye hospital in the last five years of between 15 to 20. And all the results and everything we did, we uh, analyzed retrospectively. And we actually compared it to what the review, uh, literature review actually said. So this is how it presented. Most of them were actually penetrating injuries, about 66.1%. Uh, and we had most of them as boys, uh, which both uh, correlate with what actually literature also uh, says. Luckily, most of them presented within one week to us. So the outcomes also spoke uh, similarly. So this is a lot of literature which talks about how uh, penetrating injuries and uh, the location and what sort of uh, injury generally comes along when we talk about uh, traumatic pediatric cataract from different parts of the globe. And all of them say that wood stick injuries or penetrating injuries have been the most common uh, type of uh, traumatic pediatric cataract. So this is the template we have in our OT. Uh, whenever a traumatic pediatric cataract patient comes in, this is how we approach it. If there's anterior lens capsule breach, and immediate uh, surgery needs to be done. We do a repair of the tear and only lens aspiration. We prefer not to put IOL. But if it's a delayed presentation, we do put an IOL. Uh, and if it's a, it comes as a second surgery, it means primary surgery done somewhere else, or uh, we've done the primary surgery and called it later, we do cataract removal and try to place it in the bag. So the prognosis, the question that is often asked is, will my child see again? So OTS is a good uh, indicator uh, for uh, adults. But there's a study which also says that it can be also related with uh, the pediatric age group and that it talks about how soft cataracts, if it presents as a soft or a ruptured cataract, they often do much better than a total membranous uh, rosette uh, sort of cataract. So the visual rehabilitation of final outcome is always better. So we also found out uh, similar uh, findings that if it's an open globe uh, injury or a closed globe, it really d represents a different situation where basically a closed globe uh, would do better with or a soft cataract would do better. And uh, what type of visual, uh, Habilitation you do also matters. If you do a PPC matters, if you do a lens aspiration matters, and the result matters. So IOL choices and statement uh, strategies. There was a lot of talk whether you should put IOL or not long time back, uh, but now it's sort of established that we have to put an IOL. Uh, we often f uh, try to place an IOL in the bag. It should be a single piece IOL is what we have been taught and we uh, practice that, but we always keep a backup three piece IOL. If there's no capsular uh, bag, then look for a capsular support and put it in the uh, sulcus of three piece. Otherwise, like our previous speaker spoke about, SF, IOL, iris, claw, and glue IOLs in an older child is a good idea. Studies do suggest that they have done pretty well with these options as well. And uh, we also talk about multifocals and uh, EDOF IOLs in unilateral traumatic cataract, and that can be an option uh, in much older children. Now, when we talk about PPC, we have to do PPC in all traumatic pediatric cataract. That's what we've learned from our study, because even how old, uh, old, uh, however older they are, if you lose them for follow-up for even six months, you're not doing them a favor by not doing a PPC. So we prefer to do a PPC, and often these cases come from different uh, peripheral zones and not really close to your uh, proximity of your center. So it's, not a, uh, it's a good idea to do a PPC in all of them, because they, traumatic pediatric cataracts, somehow the PPC happens uh, the posterior capsular vasification happens much faster. And in our we did most of the in, the in the bag IOL placements. So I'm going to just rush through all this. So uh, if there's a scar, you have to get over the keratometry challenge. That is, you do your uh, IOL power calculation, uh, preferably with over the contact lens method or the average method. Do not take the other eye. You can also have iris trauma associated with it. You have to be prepared for a secondary IOL in the longer outcome. And visual rehabilitation, basically we noticed that blunt traumas, uh, they rehabilitated much faster. Penetrating took much longer. Soft cataracts uh, happened much faster. The ones with iris or large scars, of course, they didn't rehabilitate all the way, even after a year. 
and uh, there was no, we didn't really have too much n uh, numbers between single piece and three piece to say which one's better. So in conclusion, it's a good homework to everybody should go back and see how you're doing with your traumatic pediatric cataract. And it's a good guidebook uh, for you to get good results with these cases. Thank you. Nice presentation. Uh, we usually do both eye biometry. So uh, how does it help? Sorry, my mind. We usually do both eye biometry. How yeah. does it help? Biometry of both the eyes. Yeah. So uh, generally, uh, it gives you an indicator that how the other eye should be. But don't, uh, what we are trying to say is don't go blindly and say, okay, the other eye biometry is there, put the lens according to that power. If there's, uh, you can either do a, a topography method or a over contact lens method, try to come near it and then decide on it. But yeah, not very far from the other eye. Thank you. Thank you. That is